Welcome back in everybody. Happy day seven of Unicorn Week. The week has come to an end. We are gonna go out with a bang and drink a couple great whiskeys. Today we're gonna be talking about Elmer T. Lee versus Elmer T. Lee 100 year tribute. This was the bottle, when I saw it was released, I really wanted it. Um, I, I have only been able to try one pour of Elmer T. Lee from a sample someone sent me when I first started into bourbon. Uh, of the normal Elmer Tilly, never the 100. And when I got the Elmer, Elmer Tilly, this is when even the prices were a little bit cheaper on it. Uh, I wanted a bottle. You know, I really, really enjoyed it. Now, the Elmer Tilly 100 was put out to commemorate Elmer Tilly's 100th birthday. So he would have been 100, and this bottle celebrates that. Now, normal Elmer Tilly comes in a little bit lower proof at 90 proof, but the Elmer Tilly 100 ups that to 50% or, you know, 100 proof. The 100. So it makes more sense. Now we don't know the age on these. These are no age statement, but from reading up on it a little bit, picks, when they used to do Elmer T. Lee picks, I don't think they really do anymore because of the, the stocks, but they were, you know, a lot of times they were between 9 and 12 years. So let's assume 9 years is probably the oldest that these are going to be now with the bourbon boom. They're probably trying to get more juice out. They don't have as many stocks. So maybe 8 years. We don't know. Um, but this one, I'm excited, very, very excited, and I figured let's do a good head-to-head -to, -head to finish the week. Um, this, also, I just want to say one thing, too. Elmer T. Lee, the normal bottle, once I tried it, it was my unicorn bottle when I started into whiskey. I still, to this day, have not been able to get a bottle. Um, I've missed out on it three times. I was the next person in line to get a bottle, and the person before me took the last one for Elmer T. Lee. So I am just, this is like, it still kind of is a unicorn to me because I cannot get my hands on it. I sure wish I could. So if any of you have a lead on it out there, let me know, please. Let's go right into color here and um, get right into this. So in the non-bourbon saying glass, we've got normal Elmer T. Lee and we have got the 100 in this one. So looking at color side by side, the 100 does look like it's a little bit uh, darker. Could just be the proof, could be it's a little bit older. We really don't know because there's no age statement. I didn't mention that these are both Buffalo Traces um, mash bill two, so they are the higher rye mash bill. Still only about 16 to 18% rye is what it's thought, so we'll see if any more of those notes come through. Let's start with the regular Elmer T. Lee. Nice classic Buffalo Trace profile. Um, actually reminiscent of some of the uh, Buffalo Trace picks I've had. Not a huge amount of rye spice coming through, at least on the nose. Um, nice fruitiness, you know, and I remember this with the sample I had sent previously. It's almost like a peach apricot note. Maybe some of that orange zest and lemon peel even coming through. So I guess, you know, I typically will describe that with rye. So maybe that rye is coming through a little bit on that. Not a huge amount of oak. Um, if anything, I'd say it's a very sweet, like cherry raisin oak a little bit. A nice nose though. Let's go into the 100 here. See how it compares. Ooh, the proof pops right out of the glass. I'm getting a lot more nostril sting on this compared to the, the normal Elmer T. Lee. Something, there's a note in this that is really amplified. I gotta think about what this is. Um, it's, it's completely amplified compared to the Elmer T. Lee. It smells a lot more rye forward. Um, I cannot put my finger on what that note is. I don't want to call it something I'm not getting. It, honestly, I'll, kind of like a dill. Maybe even like a dill note, if that's if that's weird. Um, I don't know why. I don't. It shouldn't be that much rye, but... Kind, it, it honestly kind of reminds me of some of the um, MGP higher proof, like some of the MGP barrel picks of things I've had before, where it gives you a little bit of that dill note still coming through. But that fruitiness um, in Elmer T. Lee still holds true, that citrus, you know, still those tropical fruits, I would say. Peaches, pears, even like the, like I said, the plums and raisins, but it still smells very light, very delicate, um, nothing too heavy, rich, deep. The oak isn't hitting me in the face. Very nice nose. Um, I do appreciate that amplified nose for sure. 
Let's go into a taste of the normal lumber tea leaf first. Cheers, everybody. Happy Unicorn Week. Mmm. Yep. That is why I enjoyed the Elmer T. Lee so much, the sample I had. The front of the palate, such good sweetness. Um, more of the tropical fruits, you know, reminiscent of the Elmer T. Lee 100 came through on the palate. So I really want to see how this is going to taste now. The back of the palate did leave me that rye spice, a little bit of drying rye spice even. Um, where it's kind of like a peppery, like a white pepper note on the back of the tongue. Back and sides of the palate, though, still have a nice tingle. You know, like that rye tingle I describe that leaves you salivating, you know. Not to the extent of some of the other stuff we've tried this week, but you st you're still salivating and you still want another sip. I think back of the palate is really that rye spice and oak. You know, I am actually getting some oak now. Not, it was almost non-existent on the nose, but on the palate, a little bit of that oak and that rye spice. The orange zest and the lemon peel still present even on the front of the palate, but again, more of those lighter tropical fruits. Let's go into the 100 and see how it compares. The, the rye profile on the front of the palate actually seems more amplified now. So even more of that orange peel, lemon zest, even like a cinnamon cherry coming through, which I describe, I think, cinnamon cherry a lot just on the Buffalo Trace profile in general. You know, um, a lot of their products, they all have that Buffalo Trace flavor, you know, Buffalo Trace distillery profile. And that's uh, cinnamon, like cinnamon cherry and um, like toasted almond, caramel drizzled almond are, are notes I find in Buffalo Trace products a lot, you know. This is much more rye forward, I feel like. I think those rye notes, at least for me on the palate, are amplified. Better. Um, I like that sip even a lot more. I think the, the drying rye notes are really taken away on the 100. Um, you know, a little bit of that drying oak, as I mentioned, on the, the normal Elmer T. Lee, but the 100, I think the amplified proof really leaves a better mouth coating, better finish. Even more of that nice rye tingle on the back of the palate. And it's not astringent. You know, it's really not. It just leaves you leaves you wanting more. You know, it really does. Let's go one more sip here of this one. Just because I want to. It's a pretty damn good bottle. It is pretty good. Um, not the best whiskey I've ever tried. It's... Um, it's good. I will say I, I do personally believe it's a substantial improvement on the normal Elmer T. Lee, which is hard to say or hard to believe because they're very similar in proof. They're only five points amplified in proof, um, 10 points in proof, five points in ABV. But I, I really like the finish in the mouthfeel a lot more on the Elmer T. Lee 100. Um, it holds true to the Buffalo Trace pro profile, holds true to Elmer T. Lee, you know, a little bit higher rye, but it's just amplified you know and I say this about higher proof stuff all the time and it's true like it's just amplified do a side by side of something like a buffalo trace normal buffalo trace and then try something like stag jr you know same mash bill but I, I, stag jr is actually younger than buffalo trace too but that proof it just makes all the difference and I think that's the case with this um, I don't know if it's just the proof maybe it's a little bit older too these are single barrel. Maybe one single barrel is better than another. They're both good whiskeys. You know, as I mentioned, this whole week I was nitpicking whiskey. If you get any of these seven bottles from this week, um, do it. Because it's an incredible whiskey either way. But I was nitpicking and fine, with, with a fine tooth comb this week. And I, today, Elmer T. 100 is better. Now, for the price difference, that's a different question. MSRP on this is probably around 100 bucks, I would say. I'm not sure exactly the amount on this. If it's different, I'll put it on the screen for you. I'm guessing it's right around 100. The Elmer T. Lee at retail is $35. So we're talking three bottles to one. At that value, I'm still taking three Elmer T. Lees. I am. Um, secondary prices, however, 
130 bucks now I just saw one go for an Albert T. Lee. So $130 whiskey, $100 whiskey, retail. Secondary in this probably up to 250 now, I would say. So apples to oranges, you know. Um, but at retail, which is where most, honestly, most of us are looking for our bottles and trying to find these bottles. Um, if you can get either one, get it. I would still personally pay a hundred to hundred and fifty dollars for this, for my budget and what I like to spend on whiskey. You know that's going to be different for you. Elmer T. Lee, I wouldn't pay over sixty, sixty-five for. And let me just say, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof blows Elmer T. Lee out of the water completely. It's much, much better. But um, the rarity, the scarcity, the fear of missing out, I would. Um, I'd pay 60, 60 bucks for it if I ever saw it. Never seen a bottle, you know, here other than missing out on them at uh, showing up at a store, you know, when the order was there. So either way, you're getting a good whiskey. Again, another bottle. Try it at the bar if you can. Get it for a decent price. Let me know what you think of it because I want to hear how you like Elmer T. Lee. Thank you all so much for joining me this week for Unicorn Week. Um, seven days in a row. For those of you that followed the whole series, thank you so much. You really don't know how much it means to me. It helps the channel a lot. You know, when you guys comment, subscribe, like the videos, it really does help me grow. And it means a lot to me. I love reading comments. I look forward to it every video. So if you like these types of mini series, you know, a week at a time, um, month you know i'd love to do unicorn month if i could but my wife would probably kill me so if i had if i had that many unicorn bottles uh, that'd be great but uh, if you like this type of stuff please do let me know if you have any ideas for videos in 2020 i really want to start doing more head-to-head -head tastings you know blind blind tastings head-to-head -head, side by side whiskeys as you can see this week we did three side by side tastings so i really want to do more of that this year uh, if you have any ideas or stuff you guys want to see please do let me know because I am happy to deliver. I really am. One more time, I just want to give a quick thank you to all my patrons and all my new patrons who have joined. It means so much to me, guys. Um, I couldn't be more grateful for you guys supporting the channel. Keeps me going every day, honestly. And if you want to join Patreon, check it out at Patreon Bourbon Sane uh, on Patreon. And thank you so much for being here. I will see you all very, very soon. We have a lot of good stuff coming up in 2020 and um, I don't want you guys to miss it. I'm looking forward to it. I already can't wait for uh, all the good stuff that's gonna be coming out in 2020 and then get into our 2020 Whiskey of the Year Awards video. So I'm already looking forward to that, even though it's only January. So thank you all for being here. I will see you very soon. Stay insane, everyone.